Here are some clips of Brad Garlinghouse. I have clips of David Schwartz. In this movie, I have XRP Alpha. Let's begin. The video is going to be great. Follow me through the whole thing. You'll find out a lot. He really came up with the idea of this internet of value. And in order for that to work, you need a certain oil in the engine to keep the system running smoothly. It's very quick, very cheap, and could be used in an interesting way. To say it again, I believe many cryptocurrencies will succeed. That's something we've already talked about. I believe that various use cases, protocols, and platforms will emerge as the winners. But his ideas and the way he talked about connecting the old-fashioned world of finance with the next generation, which is something we work on at Web3, really interested me. I have one more thing to say about this that I think you should know. I don't think you get many chances in your life to do something that will really put a dent in the universe, as Steve Jobs put it. In my work, I've had a few times when I felt like I had that chance, but it doesn't happen very often. It's not like anything else. And when I thought about what Ripple is trying to do, it seemed like one of those bold plans, let's make the internet better for value. We're going to set up systems that will help that future idea come true. It's definitely one of those things where we know that doing that will change how some processes work. It will make you feel like you made a difference in the world. And there's something satisfying about that for me. Not in the same way that Elon Musk does it for him. I think it was about doing important work for the world, like you said. If you can get to the valuable parts of the internet, I think a lot of these things will change. Don't forget that what you're doing here is. You can buy something called XRP that will be used by central banks to move money between banks and around the world. There has never been a time in your life when you could own technology that central banks will use. In other words, that's the level we're talking about. Don't forget to click like on the movie. Please subscribe if you haven't already. Our goal is to reach 30,000. Thanks to all of your help, the channel has been growing amazingly. This is becoming one of the coolest and most fun ways to get XRP news. And every day it's an honor to learn and grow with you. In that case, thank you. Thank you for your help. Okay, this was put out by Ray Fontes. That would make Ripple the World Bank. It says, this video clip is pretty cool. Look at this. For those of you who want to become rich one day, and if you want to be a part of one of those companies that will be worth a trillion dollars one day, you need to be on the XRP system. What would that mean for Ripple as a whole? That would make Ripple the World Bank. Say more about that. If you look at the trends and history of money up to the point where we are now, after the petrodollar and when we stop holding gold as a reserve currency, XRP is the only real competitor. I may or may not have met this guy at AMA last year, pretty cool guy, CEO of a... I believe in the Reaper of Finance, a big thank you to him. Okay, here you go. David Schwartz talks about how much Ripple benefits from working with HSBC. Really cool, let me play this in 28 seconds. The market will be worth about $10 trillion by 2030 and the use of tokens will grow. Talking to banks in the early days of Ripple taught me that many of them don't care about payments and are instead interested in things like digital asset insurance. They are looking at things like gold that have been tokenized. In that case, I believe those are tokenized stocks. These are the kinds of projects that HSBC is very interested in. Some things I can't do, tweet or post on Facebook. Every day, my team and I go through a lot of information. Only a very small percentage of people actually use Twitter. The group and crypto are what we care about. Every piece of information we get is sent to them. We've been around for more than three years. We put together our team. Our team is made up of researchers and tasks who work well together. Things and people are here. We have people who work in every area of crypto. Now is the time to learn more about crypto if you want to take your skills to the next level. There's nothing to lose and everything to win. For one month, you have to pay to be a member. You can leave our neighborhood if you don't like it. I'll tell you about the people who go in and start to learn. This is the group of people who are making and doing all the good things in crypto right now. This is a lot of fun for us. And partnerships with Ripple. As you can see, there are a lot of different ones. This is crazy, but those are all SBI interests. Just bank after bank after bank after bank after bank. That's right, guys. If you compare this to what's in the bank right now, you can see that they're probably working hard today to start putting this plan into action even more. That's why we've been. This channel for years to understand this. Yeah, it's good to see Paul Barron finally waking up, right? It's really funny. Okay, that's cool. Let's move on. A person named Newham is on the Ripple Net group. Ripple shows how its site Newham Global is linked. Other members right now are normal Charter Santa and the Bank of America. That was spelled wrong. Still, everything is fine. The country's Thailand SCB. Then there was Money Net Intent. Okay. And Newham was set up in Singapore in 2014. Newham is one of the best companies for sending money across borders. It works with a wide range of clients, such as corporations, fintech companies, and financial service companies. Its payout network works in over 190 countries and serves 100 different currencies. In 100 of these markets, it can work in real time. After all, this is only one partnership, right? 
if you think about all of Ripple's relationships and connections, you might feel overwhelmed. You're talking about people all over the world. It's not an easy thing to do here. We're talking about crazy amounts. Okay, this is Broad Galling House again. This video is from a while ago, but it fits with what we're talking about now, about how central banks use XRP as a world asset. That's really exciting. Let me play this. Ripple is really trying to figure out how to make payments across borders. Trouble. You should know that digital currencies issued by central banks are naturally local. They come from a central bank or could come from a central bank. So most of the time, they're not really solving problems that cross borders or finding answers that work in their own country. We're seeing the same thing with digital assets released by central banks as we are with stable coins. It sounds interesting to me. It's not clear to me how everything will turn out. You can see that governments are trying new things. Ripple works with a number of central banks around the world. There are some that we know about and some that we don't yet know about that are testing and releasing their digital assets on the XRP ledger as tokens. Tokens. This makes us happy to work with them. And please keep in mind that Ripple is best at working with big businesses. The government is just a big business user we don't have to sell to. That's an interesting idea. Um, I mean, it's kind of like a really big business customer. We've done that a lot of times and learned a lot from it. We've worked with some of the biggest banks in the world and with many smaller payment companies that have grown very quickly with our help. It has helped them grow faster. Should I get the chance to talk to Brad Garlinghouse, I would be overjoyed on my face. This girl keeps wondering the whole time, does she know who she's talking to, what a great man this is. Brad, please come on my channel if you've ever watched it and are now listening. People who follow you and watch this show would love to see you. Okay, okay then. Let's keep going. That's from ISOGOAT, who put up a lot of really good stuff. In that case, thank you. This is about the DLT network of central banks. There's the Federal Reserve, the Bank of England, the Bank of Japan, and the Bank of Canada. Please help me with that in the comments. Singapore's Monetary Authority, the ECB, and the SNB. It's all linked together. DLT group of central banks. You have DLT, PLT for small payments, SP2, and PSP3. You can join all of these DLT for small payments. Let's keep going from here. DLT for interoperability. It is important for all of these systems to work together so that money can move in and out of certain networks. A lot of news has been written about tokenizing real world assets, and I'm not sure what the big deal is. Bridges between TradFi and DeFi are still what I think is best, at least for now. Because TradFi has all the value right now. So saying there are trillions of dollars over here, but we're going to do something over here is not as good as saying, let's connect these things together. You've got to connect it all, kid. You need to bridge. I think the market will be worth more than $5 trillion by the end of the year. That's twice as much as it is now. What that means for Bitcoin vs XRP. It's easy to forget that XRP was the second most valuable digital asset before the SEC said that ETH is not a security. Wow, it wasn't that long ago. Not too long ago, what, three or four years. The speech by Henman was given in 2018. That's a little less than six years ago. Yes, five years of my past. Okay, let's keep going. I'm going to show you some more things. Ripple, Ripple, Raisin, Merrick are talking about Medeco and how HSBC tokenized